This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha y bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Today's guest is Mr. Dante Tanner. He is a professional bodybuilder with the International Federation of Bodybuilding Association. Also, he's a, a personal coach and a professional actor who work in many films, movie, television show, and commercial right here within our community. He's right here in the studio. And I want to say welcome to Hispanic Hawaii. And want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, you know, schedule to come in and talk to the Latin community to Hispanic Hawaii. Such a pleasure, Richard. Thanks so much for having me. All right, let's start it. But tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you was in the Navy. You retired. Tell me about what you used to do when you was in the Navy and what you do now right here in Hawaii. Great. Uh, well, first and foremost, I've been in the Navy for about, um, I spent 20 years in the Navy. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a really long time. <laughs> Actually, went by really fast. Um, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Moved to Lawrence, Kansas. Grew up there. Started my college career at um, KU. I ran track for a little while there, and then I joined the Navy. Wow. Started there, and I tell you what, um, Joining the Navy was a great uh, opportunity for me. It opened up so many doors educationally. I was able to delve into um, fields that I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to. I would spend 10 years in, in the medical field. Nice. And then <laughs> later on, I uh, became a commissioned officer. And that sort of got me into the uh, business realm of the military. So it was really great. Love the people. Uh, if you ever... This is sort of like a military town, but if yeah. you've ever been around the military a lot like you have, yes. <laughs> you'll notice that it's a cross-section of the United States and, and excellent um, people, the culture. You learn from so many people from all walks of life. And we have all the branches right here in Hawaii. Exactly. That's what <laughs> all the and branches. we depend on one another, right? We do. We okay. Do. But let me ask you, why did you retire here in Hawaii? Well, um, the military brought me here. This is one of my dream stations that I want to come to. That was my dream. Forever. <laughs> my father got it, and my family uh, loved that we got here. We, we fell in love with the weather, but we stayed because of the people, quite frankly. Um, we moved out in town, and our neighbors are the best neighbors on the planet. And just the people in general, the spirit of aloha is for real. It's alive. It's alive, and it transcends throughout the communities, through the industries, through the uh, you know even the uh, workforce, some some uh, organizations actually utilize the spirit of aloha as their customer service foundation. It's so effective, you know. So it's not just a, effective in everyday life, you know, as you're driving a car and, and you pass someone or Shaka. someone lets you buy you <laughs> some of the shaka, <laughs> but it actually um, goes into business to where they utilize that 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 culture. That, that is instilled in the people. And awesome. You seem happy, so you like Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hawaii. <laughs> All right, let's talk about you as a bodybuilder professional and also about personal trainer. So why you got into bodybuilding? Well, uh, I originally went to bodybuilding because when I retired from the military, I figured that I wanted to um, gravitate towards a career that engulfed my passion. And fitness was at the top of that list. So uh, I went to bodybuilding because, quite frankly, I couldn't figure out how to make money in fitness. <laughs> one, one, and I knew bodybuilding was one of those uh, sports that, that, that um, yielded a lot of attention. It attracted a lot of attention. And I wanted to prove that I can do something. You know, if I'm going into personal training, a lot of people that will be looking for personal trainers are looking to kind of change their their physical appearance. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, hey, if, if I can do the things correctly and do them right and change my own physical appearance, tap into something that I love anyway, fitness, and if I can show people I can do it for myself, maybe that'll give me credibility. And I just kind of started. Did a competition locally, and, and I, I received some success in that. And then I just said, you know, why not? Let's try it for the next level. And they have uh, shows that are pro qualifiers. So here in Hawaii, they have national qualifiers. 
So if you do well, you get like top three or something, that'll make you nationally qualified. And the national qualifiers can go to a pro qualifier. And if you do well at that, now you're talking about international. You're competing internationally against people from Mexico, from, uh, 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 I went to the one where I was competing, um, all the Americans, so, so um, South America, everywhere, you're competing in one location. So, and I won. <laughs> and I you, hey, that's the key, right? <laughs> all the stars aligned, and I won that competition, and that uh, gave me the um, qualification as a professional athlete. So that sparked a new career. Oh, sparked a whole new career, and I tell you what, it's just been going, it's been on fire since then. Well, I, I posed, you know, that we was going to do this interview today, and many viewers have a different question for you. Oh, and here's cool. one. Uh, what is the best way to lose fat around the, you know, baby fat, like, like me? I still, <laughs> I, still, I still got baby fat. Look, <laughs> they're still sitting, you know. They, they understand it. So how those people can work hard to lose some of the fat around the ways? Is it hard to do with food or the way they train? Well, I would say it's a, uh, it's, there's a lot of ways to reduce your body fat. And some people think that you can target fat, but targeting uh, fat areas to burn specifically, uh, it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> so, but what people can do is they can, first and foremost, start moving because fat is an energy source. Fat is your stored energy, that's all it is. So if you can tap into that energy source and start utilizing your body's accumulated energy, that's gonna allow you to reduce the body fat, those fat cells start to shrink. So you're gonna have to put yourself in a deficit somehow, right? Wow. So you can either um, consume less calories or you can increase your energy output by moving your body. And I suggest to a lot of my clients, let's burn a candle on both ends. Let's, let's consume less calories, and that doesn't mean eat less food. Maybe that's my problem. <laughs> Actually, you find that you're eating more food because a lot of, I, I don't like to take things away from people because that, you know, people are like, no, 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 no. Don't take from me, I would, you need, don't, don't, don't. just give. So I like to say, okay, let me include more plant-based products into your diet. And naturally, you're going to eat less of the things that's causing the huge caloric intakes. So if you eat more plant-based things, they're usually um, holistic and they have less caloric value to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about plant-based, I'm talking about things like even potatoes. Um, of course, the leafy vegetables and things like that. Bring those in, and then you're going to eat less of all the processed foods that we just love. Yeah, to yeah, eat. Like malasada. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. I like malasada. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but, you know, eat too many, right? <laughs> eat too many, but certainly uh, the fat will leave as 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 it came on. So if you start to notice it in certain areas of your body, it'll probably leave those areas first, and. And unfortunately, our abdominal area and our glutes area okay. are the areas that leave last. Okay. <laughs> Just have patience. Uh, I thought it was baby fat still. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I got another question for the viewer. He want to okay. know what is the best exercise to burn fat? Oh, whoa, wow. That's a smart viewer, man. That's a pretty good question. <laughs> he owes me. No, <laughs> she, okay. she owes me. <laughs> no, no, I'm just playing. But, um, the best exercise to do are the ones that you like to do most. Really? Really. Because that's going to cause you to do them. Uh, there are certain uh, levels of intensity that will burn fat more, more efficiently. So, for instance, walking. I'm a big proponent of, of walking. Walking is going to put you in, a, in an aerobic capacity to where you're still going to be breathing normally. It's going to increase a little bit, but you need oxygen to, to burn fat efficiently. Okay. So I don't want to put you in an um, anaerobic or a, a lack of oxygen state. I want to keep that aerobic capacity opened up so that you can burn fat more efficiently. So, so walking is one of them. If you can walk, if, if that's too easy, start to jog. Okay. Or, 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 or biking on a treadmill or a real bike. 
or even swimming. So something aerobic is going to cause you to, um, to um, utilize oxygen and burn that fat more. Although, I, I love my weights. Okay. So <laughs> therefore, the people out there that's listening, <laughs> lifting weights, resistance training, that's great because if you do that, you're going to increase your lean muscle mass. And the more lean muscle you have, the more calories you burn All right. while you're moving your body. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a personal trainer as well, right? Yep. So you're still training just adult? Or do you go to youth or children? Or That's anything? a great question. Um, I started my career training adults because they got the money. No, no, just <laughs> <laughs> I started training adults because um, as a personal trainer, that's how the curriculums are set up is for adults unless you, spe unless you specifically learn more about children, but it's usually the adults first. That's how you get certified. So I started training adults, and I loved it. I trained adults since 2012 all the way up to about a year ago or, or recently uh, because I was owning. So when I was training on base, a military base, I trained at the Croc Center. I trained at the uh, uh, I own Hawaii Fitness Center. So I had my own fitness studio where I was training pre people, and that was predominantly adults. And now I've switched my focus. My children are getting older. Oh, wow. They're, <laughs> they're in high school now, and I wanted to figure out a way that I can be a part of that process a little bit more because they're always at school. If they're not at school, they're with their friends. I'm like, I need to spend more time with my kids. <laughs> you, you find them there, right? <laughs> like, I can get you, in that. you train. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to... Uh, to uh, get the proper certifications. I'm a sports and conditioning coach now. So um, so now I train athlete, student athletes. And that's, that, that's a passion within itself. And that's been my focus lately. Wow, that's a bless. Now I want to talk about something they call it Blue Sun Project. The Blue Zone. Yeah, please explain to me about what the Blue Sun Project is all about. The Blue Zones Project is an awesome awesome thing. Uh, uh, it'll take me a while to go into the whole process, and I don't really know about the whole process because, in fact, I just got hired today. Hey, what a bless. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Long interview process, but it's well worth the wait. But the Blue Zone Project, basically, Blue Zones was created by, uh, we had a very, very enthusiastic pioneer go all over the world and kind of figure out how are people living the longest? And he found five areas in the world that they call them the blue zones. And um, hopefully we'll probably, um, they can Google blue zones and pull up a picture or map that'll show and you. And see the map with different locations. Blue zones, certainly. And we took, um, and, and the blue zones founder, they took characteristics from each of those areas and said, hey, if we can utilize these areas, because the Danish twin studies, they, they proved that their longevity Longevity is only 10% of the answer. It's the other 90% that we're dealing with. So that includes what we do, our environment, our lifestyles, right? So we took those nine traits, and the Blue Zones basically implements those into communities to make healthier choices easier. And when I heard about that about a year ago, I have a good friend that told me about that concept and this the you know this program I was like I have to be a part of that and I've been trying ever since man <laughs> and today today I'm going to the team well, I saw the part that you know drink wine right I like drinking wine so I think I'm going to add a few more years into my life okay good, <laughs> good. 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 wonderful <laughs> so is the blue project is implemented by individual or by companies actually uh, the blue zones project I don't know anymore. I just got on board, and there's a lot of training that I have to go through. So, okay. so I don't know everything, how we do it, and ha and how we implement it. I'll learn that pretty soon. But I do know it's the three P's: it's the people, places, and policies. So you engage with the people of the communities, and then you go to the places, the places where they worship, the places where they work, and things like that. And the policies are policies are are, are governmental policies or, or um, you know, for instance, how does a city function? We have roads, we have parks, we have things like that, and we have policies. Just recently, um, um, here in Hawaii, we we uh, passed a, a um, no smoking in vehicles law. True. 
which is pretty cool. You know, it looks out for the cakey. Cakey your kids, but those people <laughs> that are in the Midwest. Uh, they know he has water, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we call uh, our children here our cakey, and it says that you can't smoke a cigarette while you have children in cars. And that's part of what the Blue Zone Initiative is kind of all about, just making healthier choices easier for people to to do so that we can live a lot longer and happier. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was looking at those no, the different, uh, there are nine different area principles that yeah. you can utilize. So I'm going to be looking into detail, and hopefully I can uh, add a few more years into my life. I think with the wine, I'm doing all right so hey. far. Richard, we're friends, but I'm going to hook you up. Okay. As I learn coach more. Me. Coach me. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, okay. and we're going to return up to this commercial. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air systems, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with uh, local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. All right, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm here with my good friend, Dante Tanner. He is a professional bodybuilder and a personal trainer and a professional actor. All right, let's talk about acting. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who inspired you to become an actor? Wow, man, I have there's so many inspirational figures out there. Um, off the top of my head, you know, people like Denzel Washington, people like Eddie Murphy, people like Kevin Costner, it's so many people like Robin Williams. There's so many different actors and actresses that inspire me to just like, wow, if I can, if I can put it down like that, I'm doing something, you know? <laughs> but um, so many different actors. The list that go on, I can't really put one in front of the other because it's so, so many. But, um, well, you're doing well. You're working. Hey, I'm inspired. Yeah, you work in many different films and television show and commercial. Thank so you. you was able to land a job in Hawaii file. Talk to me about that. Wow. Uh, Richard, you're not to yourself, so, so you know. Still it, learning. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but you know, um, I'm finding that um, persistence, um, hard work, and being focused, and having that drive, and not just being interested in acting, but having, being committed to it. That means that when obstacle co when obstacles come up, you're going to try to just push straight through them. And I think. Uh, what got me lucky with landing the job in Hawaii Five-O was um, was just persistence and and failing a lot. When I say lucky, I'm talking about laboring under correct knowledge. Robert Kiyosaki from Hawaii said that. Correct. <laughs> so so and he's right. Laboring under correct knowledge, and you only get that knowledge through through action and actually acting. And just putting yourself out there, and and just just getting turned down a lot. I auditioned for Hawaii Five O a lot. They called me down. I did my best. I didn't get a call. Back. Didn't call back. <laughs> you know, that's and, how it work, right? <laughs> yeah, how it work. And finally, I was on a set of um, I was on a set set of Jurassic World, and I was performing there. And my agent called me up, and my agent was like, "Hey, congratulations, great job, Dante." I was like, "Oh, thank you, but." But we haven't wrapped yet, you know, we're still going. <laughs> and it's like, no. Hawaii 5 called us and said that you got the part. 
and I auditioned like a month ago. It felt like a month ago because of the holidays and all that stuff. And and they they picked me. And the te the takeaway for me trying to figure out why did I get it this time was I was better. When I uh, when I practiced, I you know I took my took out my iPhone as soon as I got all the scripts script and everything. Play. I kind of read the other person's part in there and kind of read both of them. And then I, eventually I took out my part to where I had to say my part on my own. I had to memorize it. And Richard, I got so good at doing just that, I was able to not just reiterate or, or just um, regurgitate it. I was able to put feeling into it. I was able to be that guard number one. And, and uh, not only that, Kind of like Will Smith. I don't know if you, uh, Will Smith's another actor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <It's> another <one. laughs> and the dude's so smart, and he was a he learns everyone's lines. And going into this this audition, I don't think I was trying to do that at the time. I wasn't that you know forward thinking. But I ended up learning all the lines to the three different characters that was in my uh, 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 scene. In the scene, yeah. I learned all the lines. I learned all the lines to where when I went into that um, that audition, I wasn't as nervous out. I, I wasn't as nervous as I normally am. We were always getting nervous, way, no matter what. Right, right. Now you're making me nervous. <laughs> now <laughs> we always get nervous regardless, <laughs> right? You're nervous. But I got in there. I I was able to get my lines out with the emo with the appropriate emotion, and then she switched it up. She's like, "Okay, now do my part." I guess she kind of saw me lips and, you know, what she was saying, <laughs> and then I said my part. <laughs> I did her, her part, and I was able to execute it just as good, and I think that gave me an edge. My, my uh, putting in work, putting that focus and putting in work, I think that gave me an edge. Well, I'll tell you, we want to show that video. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that real quick. Okay, cool, cool. Wow, that's a great performance. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So now you're a co-star. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. So I saw you pitch in the newspaper and I read the whole article. So what is the feeling that you feel now like, well, I was on Wi-Fi, oh, now I'm in the newspaper and, and, and people getting to know who you are? I tell you, I'm still on cloud nine. I still, I still get butterflies thinking about it. I, I tell you what, uh, I have a lot of goals with it. Uh, I still feel feel uh, nervous about it a little bit, you know. You know, we start thinking about things that are that are goals that seem so lofty. It's like, wow, man, I would never be on a silver screen and, and talking and actually portraying another character in a on an international setting. With goals like that, gives you butterflies. But to also think back in hindsight, it's like, man, I was just on Hawaii Five O. That's an international show. Why can't I uh, put myself in a position like that? And the thing is, I just said it. When I say put myself in it, I get freaked out because I know I, I can't do it. It takes other things. It takes a positive affirmation. It takes a belief in God or whoever people believe in to be like, okay, you know, uh, I can't really see a way, but I'm putting out the energy out there. And, and team works, make dreams work, and things like that. So it's not just me. So I don't have to be that freaked out by it. You know what I'm saying? You, you <laughs> know, be excited, right? <laughs> being excited is good, but being fearful to where it impedes my, my, my steps, because it does take me stepping towards it. It takes that hard work and the, and the fortitude to push forward. So yeah, uh, I am nervous about it, but that's not sh stopping me from doing it because because um, fear is a factor that can get into a lot of people's way, and I think that uh, don't let fear stop you from from performing or, or trying. So have you find anybody to say, "Hey, I want an autograph. Uh, I want a picture." No, no. <laughs> well, oh, come let, on. Let, let me be the first one right here. See before you go anywhere. I please uh, <laughs> sign my book. Hey, 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 I'll. I'll sign this if you can sign one. Okay, we, we do that. Oh, okay, bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're hey, right here. My first autograph signing right here. It's the first autograph right here. I'm Hispanic Hawaii. I'm the first request of pictures. Please. I said, I said. 
<laughs> That's it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank so, you much. Much. so much. Oh, uh, wonderful. Let me ask you a few more questions that we have from the viewers, oh, oh, right? Cool, cool, uh, cool. The first thing they ask you, your family, your family man, and they think about what do your kids think about that? Is it really my dad now, or he just the performers in the house? I don't know. Probably the second part now. No, but, uh, my kids inspire me. Everything they do is just so. Man, if you ever follow me like on Facebook, man, you'll know. I will. <laughs> my kids are amazing. I have four kids, and I'm proud of each and every one of them. Two of them are still in the house. And I tell you what, man, they just inspire me to no end. And and I'm try and I'm trying to one up them. De hey, my son think he can beat me running, and, and he probably can, but but I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to uh, you know, I'm just trying to keep up with him and it's making me better. Th that is great. Yeah. Well I want to tell you thank you so much for coming to Hispanic Hawaii and speak to the Latin community. We love the Latin community. <laughs> we want to wish you good luck, continue working hard so you can give us more autograph, more pictures. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, uh, I want to say thank you so much for being synchronized with a Hispanic Hawaii. And those who miss the show, you can go to thinktechhawaii.com and rewatch the show. And if you want to get in contact with me, richconceptgmail.com. Gracias and aloha.